All right, Jeff. The message you sent said you're having trouble tying the thread onto the hook. It's a pretty straightforward process. You're going to kick yourself when you see it. Uh, this stuff's pretty slippery. It's it's shiny metal. Makes it slip into the fish's jaw easier, right? That's the whole point. And the uh, threads are usually synthetic, so they're kind of slippery. Mount that in there. If you don't get it in there right, you can remount it. You want it in there so it uh, rotates properly. It's late at night after a pretty long day, so it's going to take me a couple of times. All we're doing is we take uh, your bobbin holder, pull some thread out. Well, you've got it threaded. Get some thread out, a little more than you would normally tie with. You normally tie with an inch and a half or two inches, right? But uh, get out enough that you can wrap it around your your finger. If it's slipping too much, take that wax. I'll give you a chunk of wax, right? You get uh, a big chunk of beeswax. Lay the thread on it. Trap it with your thumb and run it across there. You can do it two times if you want. Uh, there's special tying thread which really looks and smells to me like beeswax. I got that as a gift. Or you can use that big chunk of beeswax I gave you. Um, you don't need to buy the special tying thread. That chunk of beeswax will last you the rest of your life probably. So now you've got your wax thread. Go ahead and uh, wrap it around your finger. Pull, pull out that much. Yeah. I don't make a lot of videos, so I'm not used to filming. And come from the front, wrap it over, and then wrap it around again. And we'll start wrapping towards the tag end. The tag end is the end that's in your left hand. The live end is the end that's in your right hand. Okay. I might as well show you how to tie a fly. Um, so you've got it on there. It's on there nice and tight. I'm not holding that tag end, and it's still bending the hook, right? That's not slipping off. Uh, get your scissors, cut off your tag end, put it in a trash can. I have one on my desk. I have one next to my desk as well because this makes a big mess. Uh, remember that elk hair caddis we were fishing that day? That's what I'm tying up. I gave you some and I lost the rest. So uh, for that, you need a hook, you need some thread. You don't need the heavy thread, just uh, like that 6 aught. I think that kit your mom said she got you was that uh, hairline kit. So in there, there's six aught and eight aught. Get the, get the six aught out. Get the the bobbin. This is a bobbin. That's a bobbin holder. Get the spool or bobbin of uh, fine wire. Pull out about ten inches of that. Lay it up underneath the hook and wrap around it. This is the hook. This is the wire. Lay it like that and then wrap the thread around it three, four times and pull back until the end of that wire disappears under that first wrap of thread you made when you're wrapping it on there. Lay that back. She said she bought you the nice vise, like I got. Um, she said uh, she got you the Traveler, which is the same exact vise, dude, except it's not as pretty, but that's okay. Um, I know pro tires that have tied on them for 20 years. They're fantastic. This one just has shiny brass and stainless and aluminum. So wrap that on there all the way back to the bend of the hook. That's where the hook goes from being flat to starting to curve around to make the hook part, right? Stop there. Rotate your hook so that it's uh, horizontal instead of vertical and pull out enough thread out of your bobbin holder so that it uh, rests against the edge of the table. Excuse the mess. I work in here. Uh, I don't normally video, so I don't know if that's going to stay there. We'll find out. Get some dubbing. In that kit, you had these little packs. They come in uh, this dubbing dispensers, which are kind of cool. But uh, this stuff's pretty good. We're going to make a tan elk hair caddis, so pull some of that out. You don't need a whole lot. Uh, 
pull out a little clump like that and then off of that clump pull out a tiny little bit just enough that when you let it go that's too much you let it go it just kind of floats slowly falls all right and that is now lost forever so i'm going to get another little bit i wet my fingers a little bit of spit you use water if you want to and just twist it on there i'm taking it i'm sticking it against the thread and then i'm rubbing it like this i'm just twisting it around the thread like that and if you do it right you can make it on there so it just barely changes the thickness of the thread it makes it well twice as thick so i guess it's a big change but uh, you just want to change it to the color of the dubbing if you put too much on it looks like that so you just pull it back off and try it again with a little bit less i don't have any wax on this part of the thread uh, she said she got your dubbing wax and all that you only need that for uh, that really shiny flashy dubbing this stuff will just go on there a little bit of spit or a little bit of water or even without my fingers will dry out here in a sec and i'll forget to re-wet them now you get a thin spot like this here and there's a thin spot right there you can just take a little bit and put it right there and twist it on and you're making what's called a dubbing noodle or you could just slide up the stuff that's below it and this dubbing noodle is going to make the body of the fly we like, like nice slim bodies, don't we? Okay. Okay, mine. Alright, so uh, we'll just do that all the way down to the barrel of the bobbin holder. And you can always go back if you see a spot you messed up and go back and fix it. A little bit of moisture, a little bit of pressure. Hmm. Moisture and pressure make things better. All right. Do people often tell you your mom's hot? She is, man. All right. So we've gone all the way down. Now I've got my dubbing all the way up. If you don't have it all the way up, you just wrap a couple times around the hook until you get it where you want it. Now the cool thing about this rotary vise is that you can take it and unwrap or wrap if you want to. So I'm holding this, I get out of the way of the point of the hook, I go around, out of the way of the point of the hook, I get it where I want it, and then I'm holding it at an angle. See that angle? Not quite vertical, and you just go around so that you have a nice, continuous dubbed body, and if you mess up like that, you can fix it, and you want it slim on the bottom, Heavier on top. That's the way we like it, isn't it? And you go almost up to the eye of the hook and then start working your way back to make a nice tapered body. Now, I don't care, Caddis is not traditionally a heavily bodied fly. But there you go, that's good enough right there. At this point, uh, you're going to want one of those long, skinny brown feathers. They come in, uh, I'll put the bag away. They come in, uh, in that kit, in a little bag. It's got a couple of these and a couple that are kind of stripey. That's called a, a grizzly hackle. That's, it's a grizzly pattern, that barred pattern. Uh, I use either one. I like the brown ones for this, this fly. And you're going to want some hackle pliers. They probably look like this take those and you uh, squeeze it and stick the tip of the feather in there and let it go and that uh, that holds the feather for you they're kind of hard to hold on to right this is the butt end of the feather that's the part that was sticking in the chicken and then the tip is the part that was just hanging off them right um, this feather looks all messed up because I've been time flies and moving my hackle pliers now it's got a shiny side and a dull side. I'm probably not going to get that on video, but you'll be able to see it in person just fine. You're going to want to put the shiny side up when you apply it to the hook. And you're going to want to take your thumbnail and strip some of the some of the stem clean. Try to strip more of the stem clean on the top than the bottom. Uh, 
Okay, and that, it doesn't look like it in the camera, but that's what it did. Then you lay that, same way you did the wire, and trap it on there. You, they call it catching it in. And leave a little bit of exposed stem up. A couple turns around there, nice and tight. Bend the rest of the stem back and wrap back over top of that. And that really traps that uh, feather on there. You're tying with tension, so I'm supporting it with my left hand. And that hook is still bending in the right. Alright. So now... You're going to use your dubbing needle or uh, something like that with a hole in the end. You pull some out, wrap it over like that, stick it up on there right to the end of the dubbing and make a half hitch and pull it tight, supporting that hook eye with that uh, half hitch tool. That's a half hitch tool. There's your dubbing needle. They might say bodkin in there. It's the same thing. Your vice is cool because it came as a rotary with a bobbin cradle. That's that thing. So you've done your half hitch. That keeps from adding wraps as we spin this. Uh, we didn't have to do it before because we're wrapping the thread around. Now we want to wrap the feather around, not the thread. So a dry fly needs to be light, right? We don't want to add extra weight. So we do that. We take our hackle pliers in our right hand, hold it up, and then rotate the vise so that we make one complete turn around the front of the fly. Then we angle it a little bit. See that angle? And we make a bunch of turns going back. If you're making a really giant one, like this, in size 10, about six turns is right. Now, swap hands, grab the wire, and catch in that feather. When, when you trap a material with another like thread or wire, it's called catching in. And then start going the opposite way, forward with that wire, and don't worry about catching uh, hackle fibers down. You're gonna hear people oh, worrying about that. Uh, they're crazy. All right, so now swap hands again. Holding the wire in your right hand, catch that in, trap it down with your, your thread. You can put the bobbin back in your right hand and take another turn around it. Go around the front one time, two times. That is caught in. Now you can, if you have enough wire, I've been tying flies all night. If you have enough wire, you can wrap it around your finger. Pull down with your bobbin and you should be able to break that off. With the thicker wire, there's a, uh, this thin wire you can break right off, but this is so uh, short. I can't get a good grip. So uh, you can put wax on your fingers to get a grip, or you can take it, and they call this helicoptering it. You can bend it back and forth, or for helicoptering, you just go around in a circle, wiggle it around a circle, and it breaks right off. I was pulling down on my bobbin that whole time. Okay, so now that wire is broken off. I got enough there for another fly or two. And now... We can remove that hackle feather. Get your good pliers, open them up just a little bit, slide them up over there, and just push forward. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to squeeze it shut. It squeezed shut when I went through it, but that's just pressure. That keeps you from trimming any of the hackle fibers that you don't need. And then I stick that right there. Otherwise, I lose that little hackle tweezer, which I really like, but it's teeny tiny, so it gets lost easy. So now you see, you see, I've trapped some of these fibers forward. We don't necessarily want that, so we can just trim them off just to make it easier to tie on when we're on the water. At this point, you're done with your good scissors for a little bit. Get your hair scissors. Get your patch of hair. I'm using a different patch because my, my little tiny one ran out years ago. I've got this, uh, they call it bleach, but it's not white like the stuff in, in your package. This is kind of the same color as your mom's hair. Anyway, uh, you're going to get more hair off of uh, this patch for this fly than you think you need. You're going to take your scissors, slide them under, and lift up a bunch and then grab it with your left hand. I'm going to do this on my knee because it's easier for me, and I just explained it. You don't need to see it. Uh, and then cut it off as close to the skin as you can. 
and you end up with a whole lot of hair in your hand. And you can keep those in your hand because you're going to be using them in a minute. Now, if you look at this, you see all that fuzzy stuff in there? That's the underfur. You don't need the underfur, and you don't want it. That's what they make dubbing out of. But uh, for flaring or spinning hair, whether it's elk hair or deer hair, and it's usually deer hair, uh, that underfur creates a lot of problems. Also, short fibers, short hairs are going to create a lot of problems. Uh, so get a comb. You, you can spread it out in your fingers and flick it and pull stuff out, but it's just quicker and easier. Get a comb and comb it out. Look how much came out. That's why you grab so much hair, because all those short ones come out and all that under fur. And do that a couple, few times until you're not getting any more under fur out. And then you're going to go to your hair stacker. Your hair stacker, uh, if you got the Dr. Slick set, looks like this. It's a couple of tubes. One uh, tube has a closed end. If it's the loon set, it's going to be a little kind of yellow rectangle with a hole in one end, a little door that opens, I think. You put your hair in there. I don't know if this is on the... Uh, you just you stick the tip ends in there. And we're going to beat this... We're going to tap it to line all those ends up, all those tips up, okay? Uh, if you don't get them all in there, that's okay. We started with way more hair than we need. And you just push them down in there if you want, but you don't want to bend or break them. We're actually going to use very little of the hair that we cut off, but it's a reductive process, and you, it's just the way it works. Now, you can beat this on your mom's table uh, if you want to, but it's probably going to dent it up. And I'm going to get yelled at, and I don't want to get yelled at. I don't even know the lady, really. Um, or, remember how I showed you how to make a fist? Curl your fingers up tight so everything's touching. You can just tap it on your knuckles. Have it upright when you're doing it. This is not going to toughen your hand up. This is not some karate movie. It just uh, keeps you from beating it too hard and keeps you from denting up your mom's table. Okay, so we've done that. Um... Tap it a few times, then turn it sideways. If it's a slide apart kind, like this, support it with both hands and slide it apart. If you do this uh, up and down, that hair's gonna fall out. Look at that, it's all stacked up nice, all lined up. And then you'll have to cut some more hair and start over. Now, you can see we have a bunch of different lengths of hair in there somehow, because that elk was a natural creature and things don't uh, grow perfectly in nature, right? or they do but whatever you're going to transfer it to your right hand when you transfer hair from one hand to the other you're going to make a motion like this to grab it okay that keeps everything lined up see so we're going to take it to the hook measure it out that's pretty close we want it from the bend of the hook all the way out to the eye and we're going to transfer it back to right there it didn't look like I did that stroking motion, that's just because I didn't exaggerate it. You're going to lay your scissors right along your finger, not cut your finger, do this over a trash can. Make one cut, get them pretty square. And then you're going to take, hold them like that, you're going to slide it down over the hook, but you're not going to let it pressure on those hair, hairs. Uh, keep the pressure on those, but just get it down over the hook and keep it from going to either side. Uh, before you do that, wrap it back to the end of the dubbing and give it a counterclockwise turn. That's spinning around to the left, all right? That uh, makes the thread kind of go backwards. Now your first turn, you're just getting a hold of it. Your second turn gets tighter, and you pull while supporting it on the sides to keep that hair up on top of the hook. And you pull pretty hard, and on your third, fourth, fifth, and sixth turn, working slightly backwards, to force that wing into the right shape, you have now secured the hair. Check that out. And you got your cool little old caddis head without having to do a, a whole bunch of trimming. At this point, you want your whip finisher. That's the thing with the funny bent wire, right? Pull out some thread. 
hook that thing on if you don't understand what I'm doing there's lots of tutorials on this get that up there remember when I showed you how to whip the end of a rope to keep it from fraying we're making the same knot here and we're working backwards to kind of force that comb then you slide that up to let the bend end out slide the hook down till it comes out then grab the hook eye with your right hand and your thread with your left and pull down tight at this point if you got this kind and you've sharpened the end you can just clip it off like that if not just take your scissors slide it up in there and uh, away you go and you appear to have nicked the thread so what you can do is get your head cement and put it on there I'm going to use a UV resin that I have but you can use head cement, put that on there. This is just gonna encase it because I make that thread. You can tell I don't make a lot of videos, huh? I just encourage that to go around. And then uh, wipe the tip, a gentleman always wipes his tip. There you go. And this stuff is this resin that cures with ultraviolet light, it's pretty cool. This particular stuff cures in about 10 seconds if you have a strong light with new batteries. I have neither, so it's going to take a little bit longer. There you go, and that's set. And then I'm going to do the same thing again on the bottom, and then I'll trim that thread that I nicked off. And we'll just uh, roll that around a little bit so it gets everywhere. If you're using this stuff or head cement or whatever, keep it out of the eye of your hook. If you get some in the eye of your hook, you can take uh, some peacock curl. That's the, the fibers from uh, peacock sword, you know, peacock feather. Slide it up in the eye and it's got all these little tiny fibers sticking on the side, these little barbs. And... Uh, That'll clean the eye out. I didn't get any in there because I'm used to messing up and having to fix it. So I'm just going to cure that. And there you go. That's how you tie on and then tie an elk hair caddis that is way oversized. Uh, normally this fly is a lot smaller. But the bass and bluegill and crappie and... Uh, flyers we have in that pond they really like these big elk hair caddises I don't like them I, I tie these down to uh, 16 is about the smallest I time and normally I go up to a fort well 16 and 14 and sometimes a 12 but uh, those guys have seemed to like the big flies so I tied uh, a bunch of tens see if they go for that and they have so I've been tying tens for them for a while and uh, they dig it and so I'll keep doing it it's easy for me easy for them and then at this point if you want to you can go in and trim up your little wild hairs or mistakes I've got that piece of uh, thread that got loose cool thing about that resin is it just slides off of hackle fibers once it's cured. It just kind of bubbles up and then it slides off of them. So I don't even, uh, if I get some where it doesn't belong on a hackle fiber, I just cure it and then it just comes right off. And there you go. That's a nice high flo floating fly. Well, you fished with my flies, you know. Um, put a little grease on that thing and then... Stick it in a fish's mouth. Alright. Say hi to your mom for me.